we are continuing to study the fundamentals of a function with two or more variables as inputs. So we've seen the notation, we've looked at some sketches of some familiar functions, and we've spent some time looking at domain and range, which are definitely related to what we've learned before about those things, but, but also some somewhat different. So this topic is called level curves. And I think the name will become clear. It's meaning once you just see it in action, I don't feel like giving a, a full on description when I think this is a, is a well named term. If we were to look at the function f of xy equals x squared plus y squared, this is a paraboloid. And that's the z axis and the x and y axis. And we know that if you measure at different z values, you're going to see circles that are increasing in size as you go up the side of this parabola bowl. So the concept of a level curve is really related to some uh, other topics you would study, not in a math, but maybe in a geography class. So let me uh, explain. If, if we let z equals zero in this problem, we would have x squared plus y squared equals zero. And if I were to attempt to graph that, it would just be a single point. The origin would be the, the point that goes along with that. That's it. There are no other x and y values. You can square them and the sum would be zero. If z were to equal a one, x squared plus y squared equals one, well then you'd have a circle of radius one. And that would be like looking at the three dimensional graph and saying, well, let's go up to the first level of our building And it's that circle right there. And then if we went up to z equals 2, x squared plus y squared equals 2, well, that's a slightly larger circle, uh, square root of 2, but it would be just a little bit larger than this one. And when I'm drawing it by hand, if I'm making a sketch, it's not nearly as good as a, with a computer, but it would represent the the circle that is one unit higher at the next level, the next level of this parabola building. I'm on the second floor now. And we could continue this. What if z equals 3? x squared plus y squared equals 3. Well, that's a slightly larger circle. And that would represent the circle that is exactly three units up on this parabola bowl. So we're not going to be graphing this. What we're going to be graphing is this top view and looking at the various curves that we would see from the top view. Now this last picture I am not proud of. That is not a good picture. But if I were to squeeze one more in here, x squared plus y squared would equal four. That would be the circle of radius 2. That's horrible. You would probably be better served to have a compass to trace circles precisely or different sized circles to look at. But I want you to see what we're looking at is a way to take a three-dimensional shape and study it from a two-dimensional picture. Now you would see this if you were looking at a 
topographical map where the level curves represent the places on the map here at the same altitude. Some topical, topographical maps are more interesting than others, but anywhere where there's a mountain, you see some fantastic lines. And these curves represent everything, like this last curve, everything is at the fourth level. Third level, second level, first level, ground level. So that's the concept of a level curve. Now, the question will be to sketch the level curves. And this is what you turn in, so to speak. But having the visual, I hope, is somewhat useful. Now, let's look at another one. This is another type of paraboloid. It happens to open downwards. It's 12 units up where its vertex is. So the question is, what, is, what do its cross sections look like? And so if I were to ask, well, what if z equals 0? 12 minus 4x squared, uh, let's put uh, minus 3y squared equals 0. Well, I'm going to have to do a little bit of work here. 4x squared plus 3y squared equals 12. Divide by 12, and you get uh, x squared over 3 plus y squared over 4 equals 1. Aha, that's an ellipse. And if I were to attempt to make a better sketch than last time, x and y, 1 and 2 units out, 1 and 2 units left, and 1 and 2 units down, and 1 and 2 units up. Left and right, square root of 3, that's about 1.7. Up and down, 2. And my picture is still not to scale. It is definitely not supposed to look like a circle. Well, that's a good thing because I don't draw well. It's not a circle. This is an ellipse. And that's what the graph would look like at the ground level, where z is 0. If I were to let z equals 2 and try it again from there, I would have uh, 2 equals 12 minus 4x squared minus 3y squared. Let's add terms over. Subtract the 2. Divide by 10. Oh, no. It's 2 fifths. It's x squared over 5 halves and y squared over 10 thirds. This is fun math, isn't it? And you'll have slightly smaller ellipse, slightly smaller ellipse. And it would still be taller in the up and down direction. And that would represent the ellipse that's two units up. If I were to try z equals four, this would be the level curve, four units above the ground, and it was going to be another ellipse. All right, try this one. Also, and if I kept going until I got to z equals 12, I should get a cross section that's a single point. That's what I should get. 
ultimately it's going to come out to be x squared plus y squared equals zero if you go through the labor. So you understand what we're doing. We're getting what does the cross section look like if we look at the third dimension but just slice it one level at a time. These level curves These level curves show you what the cross sections would look like at each level of the building. All right, when we come back, we're going to look at one more example in the next segment that has a different shape cross section.